So today my talk is about like bosom comp sensors, uh, scalable blockchain sharding from sensors. Um, my name is Chi. Uh, I'm work on the uh, right now. I'm working on a project called Blockchain, which is basically the uh, realization of the bosom comp sensors. I used to work at Facebook and Google on the infrastructure, and so. Actually, everybody here actually are discussing a uh, scalability issue like hash graph, trying to address in uh, like different ways. And so, because everybody knows like right now Bitcoin and Ethereum have, are suffering from this uh, low transaction per second. And the reason why is uh, actually, um, and there are a couple of solutions that I try to address the problem. And one straightforward solution is straight, hey, why not just tune those parameters of block size and block interval so that we can, um, for example, increase the transactions. So, for example, pick a cache, which increase the block size from one megabyte to 32 megabytes, so that you can claim more transactions per second, uh, which is over 32 times of Bitcoin. However, with the longer time, uh, larger block size, which also means that you will take much longer time to propagate the block in the network, especially there are a lot of nodes in the, in the network. And this creates, increase the probability of the forks, which also means that a lot of block blocks may be stale because uh, if the flock happens, only one of them will be chosen as the clinical chain, and which means that some of the hash power are wasted. And also, if, for example, the, the, the block have a lot of smart contract transactions, this computational resource to run this smart contracts, which right now a lot of people using EVM, they are still extremely slow uh, versus like a centralized computer programs. And for example, uh, one data shows that in 2014 and 15, in the Bitcoin network, propagating one megabyte block to 90% of the nodes takes roughly 2.4 minutes. And which, and this time also increased proportionally uh, in terms of block size. So that means that suppose I increase the block size to 10 megabytes uh, in the same network condition, it will take roughly 24 minutes for a block to reach, reach 90% of the blocks, which means that it's almost guaranteed that there's another block that's created, suppose in another 10% of the, of the nodes, and which means that we have a very high steal rate. And another solution, uh, which are actually pretty popular these days, people discuss a multi-chain, cross-chain interoperability, and basically it's to try to use multiple blockchains, and however, it quickly enter sometimes we call it hash power dilution issue, or because sometimes people call it single shard attack, which basically means that suppose I have 100 some uh, homogeneous chains running on the same hash algorithm, then I can find at least one chain with at most one to the 100 has power of the network, which means that attacker can easily just rent maybe one to the 200 of hash power in order to do a double spending attack on this chain. And also, besides the security issue, there's also issue in terms of interoperability. How we are able to securely, for example, form cross-chain interoperability between these two chains, especially suppose one chain is being double spent, and how could another chain be able to address, detect this issue and revert corresponding transactions? Otherwise, we have the additional asset being created on these multiple chains. And which I believe our uh, is, is actually working on the solutions to that. And so, basically, we observe these two na naive solutions, and they have their pros and cons. And our thoughts is that hey, it's possible that we are able to combine the benefit of both of them. So basically, we. By employing multi-chain ideas, we have a core short layers, which is a list of we call homogeneous chain that can run like the process of these of non-overlapping transactions uh, in parallel. So each of chain can have its own consensus. It can be proof of work, proof of stake, depots, any kind of, as long as it's a chain. And it can run its own ledger. Uh, for example, it can be account-based ledger based on EBM or JXO, any, 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 any ledger can, it can be. And we have called root chain layer, which is just a single chain, 
and it does not process any transactions. What it does is just describe the canonical chain of each shard by just include, for example, the headers or hash value of the tip of each chain. And so here is the basic diagram of how the chain looks like. And, uh, and the line here indicates the hash pointers that each block, basically for each shard, you have a hash pointer to, the, to link to the previous block, while the root chain it just includes the hash pointers of the of, of the short uh, blocks. And so now we have n plus one chains, and each chain actually runs its its, its own consensus. However, so for the root chain, you can run any consensus as long as its body consists of a valley, which means that it's describe a single chain, not multiple chain, or a box of a chain. That would be uh, invalid. Uh, root blocks. It can be proof of work with a total difficulty of fork choice rule or depots of posts. And each shard runs its own consensus to produce a block. And however, in terms of fork choice rule, we will use a special fork choice rule called root chain first fork choice rule. Basically, what it means that when comparing a two fork of a shard, before it, it applies its local fork choice rule, it will first look up its corresponding longest root chain, determine who is the longest. And after applying the root chain, and then local consensus will be applied. And this is a very simple uh, fork choice rule. And there's a very strong implication in terms of security of this root chain first. Uh, rule, uh, for choice rule of each shard is that a double spinning attack on any shard of a shard block that is already basically included by the root block root chain must also revert the corresponding root chain, root blocks. So for example, suppose this is the ledger of the network and an attacker try to revert a block uh, and its corresponding transaction in this block by creating a longer fork of this short block. And when the network detects this short block, and so it will say, hey, by applying the fork choice rule of root chain first, it will detect this tip of the this tip of the chip of the short block has corresponding root block here. While this attacking one has corresponding root block which is here. Since this one has uh, longer root, root chain with higher uh, some total difficulty. So no matter how long this attack it is, it will always fail uh, unless the attacker creates another root chain fork that try to revert corresponding root block that includes the target's uh, shard, uh, shard blocks. And since this root chain has very high security guarantees, performing such kind of attack will be much higher cost than just attack a single shard block. And also, we can compare our this is, this, this our like also consensus with existing solutions. One popular one is called merge mining. Basically, a miner mines both chains, which runs the same hash algorithms like Maincoin and Bitcoin. And however, they have to produce the block in different chains synchronously. While in our model, each chain has its consensus, so it just produces the block asynchronously. Another popular solution is called Ghost, which basically it will consider the hash power of the stale block and include it in the canonical chain. It can increase the block rate, however, it sacrifices the performance because some of these transactions are overlapped in this block, in these stale blocks. And actually, Boson consensus, the ledger produced by Boson consensus actually is a DAG, but it tries to harvest the benefits of both the blockchain and DAG. It has a very clear security model because it employs root chain first consensus. So that given two ledger, I can easily tell which one will be selected or chosen as the canonical ledger of the network. 
and it has a higher throughput than a single blockchain because all the blocks in each shard blocks are produced asynchronously. And there are a lot of topics regarding boson consensus. For example, what are the token economies of the root chain and short chain so that the root chain are incentivized to include blocks of shards. So that this is basically a foundation of how, this, how the consensus work. Another topic is like, hey, now we have suppose 100 shards. How could we dynamically add 100 and, 101 shards in the network Suppose we pass by either a up network upgrade or a governance model. And another is security is that how we are able to further enhance the security by combining proof of stake, which we uh, both have an idea called proof of stake work, which I will present in the after uh, this afternoon in pop up note uh, at 6 uh, p.m. And another topic is how we are able to perform cross shard transactions from, for example, by sending an asset from one shard to another shard in a scalable way and also secure, which we prove that actually both in shard transaction and cross shard transaction in, our, in the network can share the same security guarantee uh, as long as we have some uh, protocol built behind and also heterogeneous shards which can run different, for example, ledger or virtual machines. And so I'll probably skip all these uh, details. Um, so, for some consensus, actually it's just kind of blockchain relationship like blockchain and Bitcoin, and just provide a way that we can produce the ledger, but leave a lot of space, for example, how the root chain looks, what kind of consensus the root chain looks like, and what the consensus of, for example, each charging looks like. For example, one example is that the root chain runs proof of work, and also the charging runs proof of work, and um, so we can adjust this hash power by um, incentive type, different incentive on these chains. Um, we can also, for example, have the root chain run proof of work while charging proof of stake, and employ the strong, strong security of proof of work, for example, the hash value as the random value to select the stickers. And you can also, for example, run uh, depots in the root chain and then for each shard run proof of work um, so that you can enjoy the fast finality of depots while keep some kind of level of the decentralization since the proof of work, the miners can still join the network and contribute the hash power to the network. And so we just released our technical white paper of Boston Consensus, which is in our paper. Uh, basically, we, I, we mathematically describe what the consensus looks like, what kind of ledger it, it, will, it will be produced, which is kind of chain of blocks, and what kind of how we prove that why every uh, double spending attack on sharp block must also reverse the corresponding root blocks uh, by mathematical proof. And also we demonstrate how this cross shard transaction, these messages can be securely uh, transferred to different, from one shard to another shard. And so now we go to blockchain, which basically is the first realization of Boson's consensus. Uh, right now, it uses the proof of work and, and uses the hash of the root chain. And for each shard, it actually can adopt whatever consensus hash algorithm it is. Uh, right now, it's using uh, account-based ledger and also EVM as all the shard uh, uh, ledger and transaction model, so that we can easily incorporate with chaining and deploy this contract triggered by the Oracle that produced by Chenik. And we also implement a class feature, which basically, in, within a full node, we are running it as a cluster, and it will contain a root node and multiple shy nodes, which can work in either small trust mode or non-trust mode, so that it can enjoy different security level and this is kind of like, uh, we can easily, for example, run a node, scale a node to multiple machines, um, which we have the open source code and invite our community members to join called a TPS competition, which everybody just cr create those clusters and create as much as node they want, and the highest number they can get 
uh, is uh, 55,000 transactions per second. And so our mainnet was officially launched in on April the 30, 2019. And here is the parameters uh, that are run on top of the network. And so we are also proud to collaborate with Chainlink uh, in the area of Oracle. Uh, so we are happy that we are able to, for example, scale this EVM using this uh, multi-chain concept. And now we are able to uh, trigger all these smart contracts using the Chainlink Oracle node and to perform a lot of fancy things, for example, interoperability between different uh, chains like Easter or ETC. And we are looking forward to more collaborations once the network grows much uh, greater. And so um, many thanks for attending my uh, presentation. Uh, do you have any questions? Good question. So, uh, any, uh, uh, oh, yes. So the question is, if there's a cross short transaction happens in the network, how we are able to prevent double spending? Um, so let's take an example of a simple cross short transaction. Basically, it's balance transfer. I have a assets on SHA-0 and want to move this asset to, to SHA-1 and I want this transaction to be atomistic and there's no extra assets being created even source transaction or source message is double spent and so the key point here is that in order to make sure this withdrawal, we have, we, have, we have to build a happen after relationship of withdrawal transaction and deposit transaction, which is basically construct a partial order. So back to this curve, a bit back to this uh, ledger. So for example, suppose there's a transaction that sends the asset from SHA-0 to SHA-1. And in order to this deposit transaction to be processed, the corresponding block must acknowledge the corresponding root block, which basically here each SHA has two hash pointers. One is chain to the previous block. Another is chain to the root block and make sure that it is also monotonically increasing in, in, in terms of block height. And so that once it's included, then it's able not to process this deposit transaction. And now if there's a double spending attack, following the root chain first first choice rule, which means that if this one is being double spend, that means the corresponding root block must be also double spend, which means that the corresponding deposit transaction is also being double spend, which means that all this will be reverting back to the state of the previous root block. So we guarantee that, that there will be never a uh, new asset will be created first, and second is that such kind of double spending attack we all must also attack the root chain. So basically, the intra transaction and cross transaction share the same security level as long as it's included by the root block. Any other questions? Yeah, you know,